Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and today we're driving a rally legend. Thanks to AI Design in Tuckahoe, New York, and Team Champagne Ninjas, we're driving a very rare, very cool, and freshly imported 1994 Lancia Delta Integrale Evo 2. This car is very important in the rally world because it won six consecutive times in Group A WRC from 1987 to 1992. This being a 94 is the very last iteration of the first generation Delta and it is gorgeous and incredibly fun to drive. This is the hot hatch that was forgotten and frankly today we're just going to talk about how it drives but we've also got to figure out if it's worth the hype. I think this car has become really big on the internet lately and you know what I'm just gonna spoil it for you it's worth every bit of the hype so let's kick it off easy we're gonna go under the hood because what's under here is one of the most special things in the world we've got a 16 valve two liter four cylinder turbo that makes only 215 horsepower now it doesn't sound like a lot because well frankly it isn't where's my little there you are and yeah, maybe you didn't know that the hood opens up in this direction, but the easiest way to spot an Evo 2 is this red valve cover if you didn't already have the styling cues on your mind. But yeah, this red valve cover exclusive to the Evo 2, the Evo 1 does not have that. The Lancia Delta started off as an economy hatchback, an upscale economy hatchback, but an economy hatchback nonetheless, and it started in 1979. So the first generation of the Delta, which this is, this is a first gen Delta, started in 1979 and ended with this in 1994. That's crazy. But it got more and more complex over the years, primarily because it had to go racing, because when Group B went away, they homologated Group A cars. So they made 2,500 or 2,481, I think is the number, but we never really tried. Italian production figures, but let's just say 2,500 of the Evo 2s were built. And as they started winning these races, they had to scramble to keep up with the competition and stay ahead of them. So originally these cars with their all-wheel drive system were front-wheel drive biased. They sent 54% of the power to the front and the rest to the rear. But when they went from the 8-valve to the 16-valve, they swapped it. They were trying out four-wheel steering and it wasn't going very well, or at least it wasn't giving them the results they wanted. So instead, they actually swapped and now this car is rear-wheel biased. It can send 53% of the power to the rear wheels. That's very cool. It's all done with a Ferguson all-wheel drive system, but even though it's got this cool viscous coupling that'll send power to the rear, what's really trick about this car is the torsion rear diff. So not only can it send most of its power to the rear end, it can control it, lock that diff up to about 70%, and send this thing flying out of a corner sideways. And the Evo 2 became quite advanced. The 16-valve 2-liter has an ignition system akin to that of a Ferrari F40. It has ABS, and apparently the ABS is pretty liberal, so it'll let you basically basically lock them up unless you have a particular yaw angle. Kind of nuts. Quick ways to tell that this is an Evo 2. We've got two equal size headlights, the little guys. On the older versions, you'd have a larger headlight. We've got 16 inch wheels fitted with 205 section tires. Previous Evo had 15 inch wheels. But what's most striking about the car is just all the bulges. It really is incredibly muscular because you've got these monster box fenders that are integrated into the body, into the door. You've got this great little spoiler that's adjustable. You have a little tool and you can change that. The back is just incredibly square and it is shameless about the fact that it's a rally car because we've got this tow hook front and center exposed at all times. Now there's not even a fuel door. In fact, in order to gas this thing up, you need the key. You need the key because this is how you remove the little stopper guy. And then, boom, you've got access. So that is hysterical. And then we got to pop it back in. We put it like this and hope for the best, honestly. Up front, we've got a monster hood bulge, which I believe started with the 16 valve car. Not positive, you can fact check me on that. But then we've also got these great little hood vents. Everything just looks so functional and purposeful. And even back here, we've got a little vent and everything is real. It's not fake. We've got real functional stuff going on here, guys. But aside from the fact that it's a legitimate road going rally car, it's actually wildly practical. We can open our hatch back here and we have loads of space for all of the things, including what this owner did. Thanks to AI design, there's a subwoofer that they tied into the 
functional real spare tire. And then under here, this is actually part of the audio system as well. So this is very clever because they've basically hooked this up and it just looks completely stock. They haven't had to drill into anything or impact the car in any kind of deleterious ways. Now, this is obviously pretty heavy, so they had to get clever with some stronger struts and then some metal little cable guys to hold this up. We've got this incredible interior with lots, lots of Alcantara. And it's pretty comfortable back here. Now, I do sit pretty high. So, you know, it's not the most incredible headroom, but if you slouch a little bit, you'll be just fine. And you'll be happy that you're getting to enjoy a rally legend from the back seat. So, you know, get over it. You'll notice that we've got roll down windows, which I think these are going the wrong direction, if I'm correct. That seems like it's backwards, but that's all right. And the reason why that's interesting is because the front seats have power windows. The front doors have power windows. And then this is how you get out. You pop that. That's the same up front as well. We've got a little ashtray because we're an Italian car. We're probably going to be smoking a cigarette, drinking espresso while we bomb down some dirt country roads. The car does come with two keys and this key, this funky looking key, that's the door lock. And luckily we do have power locks and I don't have to go and individually lock every door. That was a nice surprise. And then when we get into these glorious Recaro seats, they are quite snug. They are meant for a small skinny Italian like myself. And you'll notice the steering wheel, guess what? That's not aftermarket. This Momo steering wheel is actually what came with the car. So let's take our little key, start it up and go for a drive. jumps right to life. We've got our Wayland uh, uh, dash cam making some noise here, but you'll notice a blinking light on the dashboard. Now that's not an, oh no, everything's wrong. It's actually just telling me that my handbrake is up and it blinks. I don't know why it blinks, but it's just an alert. Okay. We've got a lot of stuff going on here, but in order to see this dashboard at all, to see your gauges, you've got to have the steering wheel set up kind of like a bus. So it is up pretty high. We've got our speedometer, our boost gauge front and center, fuel, voltage, and of course, water temperature. That'll come way down as we start driving because we've just been idling for a minute. So it'll sit there. This reads in real time. And a lot of modern cars, if you don't know, they damp all of these gauges. So unless your car is legitimately overheating, you're never going to watch that needle move. It'll just stay put until it's too late. In these cars, old Italian cars, they're going to tell you exactly what's going on in the moment. I mean, look at our voltage here. I'll put the headlights on. You know, you can watch that go right down. All right, then we have our tachometer, which some YouTubers will tell you goes in the wrong direction. In fact, it does not go in the wrong direction. It still moves in a clockwise fashion. It's just that the zero, the zero position is at three o'clock. So it starts way up over there. And so it swings down rather than up on the initial motion. And over here, we've got our oil pressure and oil temperature. Always good to have oil pressure in your Italian car. We want to keep an eye on that one. But this one, honestly, I wouldn't worry too much about this car. It's pretty solid. Now, awkward things about this car. The window buttons down here. They're in an inconvenient spot and you can't really put them down unless your handbrake is down. So then there you go. All right, great. But very cool feature here. There's a scrolly wheel with a headlight image that actually allows you to change the angle of your headlights on the fly. They actually move so you can change how high or low you want your headlights to be aimed. And in the center stack, we've got this great modern Blaupunk system, which I can plug my phone into and get my, you know, Spotify, all that good stuff. And uh, down here, we've got some more switches, but this is your front fog lights, your rear fog lights. All of this is very difficult to find when you need it because they're kind of random. And at night, when you'd actually want to use this stuff, these are not illuminated, so you can't see them. And I believe the only option in the Integrale Evo 2 was air conditioning. This has AC. All right, so let's go for a drive. We've got a five-speed manual and a traditional H pattern. It's got this very strange little, I guess, thumb rest, but I don't know. I don't put my thumb there. That's very odd. That's fine though. Very loud blinker relay coming from that side of the car. These seats are really incredible too. These Recaro seats. Now you sit up fairly high, but because they're like this Alcantara, you're, you're, you're kind of harnessed in almost like Velcro, you know, it's hard to slide around on them. Plus they are uh, pretty tight on the side bolsters. So they do hold you in place nice and tidy in the corners. Like I said, you do sit up fairly high. So if you're tall, you may have problems with headroom. I've got a few inches, but I'm about 5'10", so I'm fine. Man, oh man, this is as good. 
good as it gets. Meet your heroes, guys. Meet your heroes. I feel so lucky because not only am I driving a Delta Integrale Evo 2, I'm driving like the nicest one. This is like one of the nicest examples in existence. How is this, how is this possible? This is one of the few cars where the harder I push it, the more I realize I'm underestimating its capabilities. You can just do things in this vehicle that you don't expect it to be able to do. And I mean, you chuck it into a corner and you think, well, that's probably it. No, it's always got more. I don't understand. It defies physics, Ugh, except for that glove box. The 16 valve doesn't sound particularly outrageous. I mean, it certainly doesn't sound bad. It sounds good, but I'm not sure that I could listen to this on an audio recording and immediately identify it as the Integrale. Like, it certainly sounds like a two liter four cylinder turbo, but there's no like big whooshes and booshes like you'd hear, booshes, I don't know, like, a, like an Evo or a WRX, you know, it doesn't have that kind of craziness. It just gets down to business. What's incredible though, is the way this handles a corner. Even though this engine is so far forward, it, which seems like it would just be a mess in the handling department, the way this tucks into a corner is, is mind boggling. It's so confidence inspiring. And then the brakes, you know, you've got fantastic brakes on this thing. So it really does allow you to go a little nuts Turbo spools up very predictably. It loves this mid-range. There's our glove box opening up. Very nice, very Italian. You always have to multitask while you're driving these cars. That actually, it was probably just my fault. I put my sunglasses in there earlier. But, you know, for a hot hatch, for any car this is so exciting to drive and i've driven loads of hot hatches all of the gti's and the ford focuses and the rs and all this stuff i don't know that i've ever had more fun than this because it just does things the other cars don't seem to be able to do or if they can do them they feel a little sketchier doing it this feels so ridiculously planted all of the feedback it gives you inside the cabin is just phenomenal This thing just hauls. It's incredible how quick it is. Numbers don't do this justice at all. I mean, we're working with 215 horsepower and I find myself having to slow down because we're going too fast. I mean, that, that should tell you all you need to know about this car. It, it just is such a monster. And the second you get in it, you understand how it became such an animal in the racing series that it was competing in, in Group A WRC. It's just unreal. You almost never look at this tack just because it is inconveniently located and it's hard to look at, but you know, it's giving you all the information you need just from the sound. It's not a loud car, it's fairly quiet. This is not a car that you're gonna rev up for your friends and show off, but Man, if you give them a chance to drive it or take them for a ride in this thing, they'll get it. They'll get it immediately. And if you if they don't, then throw them away. They don't need those friends. You don't need friends who don't like an Integrale Evo 2. First gear, all the gears are actually fairly long. On the highway at 75 miles an hour, you're only turning about, you know, 
3000 RPM. You do need all the gears. You cannot do the lazy like, oh, just kind of I'm rolling so I can shove it in second and, and roll into it there. No, you, you need to be using that first gear if you're not up to speed. First gear actually is necessary in this car. But what's great is just how easy this transmission is to operate because there's no crunches. I mean, maybe that's just a testament to how well it's been maintained. This car did live in a museum in England for quite some time until it was able to be imported into the US in 2019, 25 uh, year rule. Um, but it just feels so wonderful in the hand. Now it's not like a really robust kathunk kind of shift. Everything feels really smooth and simple. You don't have to put a whole lot of effort into it. Same with the clutch. The clutch, while it's tactile and you can feel exactly where that bite point starts and ends, uh, you know, nothing is heavy on the car. It's very light and easy. That's no joke. That's no joke because we're looking at a little hatchback and it can do that and it can do it at speed and it can just climb and climb and climb. Oh man, this thing is good. Sometimes you look at your hero cars, your hero race cars, the homologation cars like this and you think, could it really be that good? Or is it just a bunch of owners lying to me because the production numbers are so low that I'll never know because I'll never get the chance to drive it. Well, look guys, I don't own this car. The value of this car is meaningless to me because I'm never gonna buy one probably and I'm not trying to inflate my own value or my ego. This is that good. This is worth the hype. This is the best hot hatch I have ever driven. And we got a WRX, they're into it. That's the thing. All the rally guys, they're like, what am I looking at? They see the big 90s box fenders. They know this thing is down to party. So now we're out here on the highway. We're cruising along, indicated 75 miles per hour. It reads a little bit high, so we're probably at about 70, 71. 3,000 RPM, oil temps nice and cool. We got our water temp coming down to about, what is that? 80, 70 degrees C. The second we stop, that'll come right back up to 90, but it kind of hits its homeostasis at about 100 if we got into some traffic. I know this because I spent, I've spent about 10 hours driving this car. I drove it all the way down to Greenwich, Connecticut for the Greenwich Concourse for Radwood. And I actually got to park it up next to an 82 Lancia Delta, which was even cooler to see because who preserves an 82 Lancia Delta? That's crazy. I understand why people preserve cars like this, but an 82 Delta is a car that you just would have run into the ground and thrown away. Behind the steering wheel, we have three stocks. We have our blinker stock over here. We've got our he uh, high beam and headlight stock. So to turn on the headlights, we just rotate this wheel forward. To turn the high beams on, we just move it up and down. And then over here, we've got our windscreen wiper settings. And I like this because everything's right at your fingertips. Now, it's not a modern Ferrari where you got your blinkers on your thumbs and all this stuff, but you know, you can do all the things with your hands on the wheel, which is pretty impressive. And I think that was probably the mentality of Lancia at the time. What I find so particularly impressive about this vehicle is that although it's light and nimble and tactile, it's also okay as a GT car. Somehow, somehow this is a really comfortable thing that's not twitchy or darty when you wanna just cruise along. Dare I say this is the greatest daily driver of all time. It does all of the things. It'll transport four people, you've got space in the back, it's fast as heck, you've got a manual transmission, you've got steering to die for. Honestly, some of the best steering in the business. All wheel drive, you'll never get stuck. I mean, this thing is just blowing my mind. And you just catch anybody in an off ramp, you're like ready to go race. No wonder this one races. This is incredible. Imagine seeing this coming up behind you, the coolest. And I'm just gonna say this, I feel bad for anybody who drives past this car and doesn't give it a look, because you're missing out, man. This is as good as, this is the coolest thing. And if you drive past a car like this and you just don't even give it a glance, 
You don't deserve to see it. So I want to thank Team Champagne Ninjas, AI Design, Launcha, circa 1994, for the opportunity to drive such an incredibly capable and, and significant car in history. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. You know how I know I have the best job in the world? Because I've spent probably 400 miles in this Delta Integrale Evo 2 this weekend. And my only job is to have fun and share it with you. Wow.